on, laddie. These blasted TV sets ain't worth a cat's whisker. <laughs> can you fix the set, Mr. McTaggart? Uh, there's something I gotta watch. Sure I can. But what I can no do is understand why anyone bothers getting these sets fixed when there's nothing worth a hoot on them in the first place. Uh, in the old days, we didn't need pictures. We listened to the radio and used our imaginations. Uh, that's very nice, Mr. McTaggart. We had the thrillers like Dog Squad, chillers like The Creek and Kennel, and real knee slappers like Roll Over Rover and Pooch and the Pups. Yeah, Pooch and the Pups. It were the magic of radio. The magic of radio. Just what the denizens of Dog City would have listened to. And a great idea for an ace heart mystery. Yeah. <laughs> and now, Station WFIDO is proud to present another live episode of... <laughs> it's a dog's life. Starring Bernard St. Bernard, Misty Whiskers, and Spock, the dog of a thousand voices. I'm Orson Welp, your humble guide through a world of thrills and chills. Brought to you today by Dr. Whippet's Worm and Tick Tonic. Dr. Whippet, he's a tonic, help sends worms and ticks into the ground. Oh, just one swig, and you will learn. Your ticks will take a powder and your worms will turn. We last left off on a stormy night in the gothic mansion of Bassett von Kenilworth, as the exotic feline fatale was about to give the dashing dog about town, Rex Rover, a glimpse into her dark past. Feline, why didn't you tell me you were with that, that heel on the cliff in Morocco? I was afraid, Rex. You see, that's just it. That heel didn't heal. He got feline. You mean he jumped? They never found a hoop, Rex. He was pushed. <laughs> it's a dog's life was the hottest thing to hit the airwaves. When it was on, every ear in Dog City was glued to the radio. The music, the sound effects, the voices, all part of the magic of radio. Your imagination provided the pictures, even if you didn't have much of an imagination. Styles Silverbach was station WFIDO's owner. I had gotten a call from him regarding some recent accidents at the station. He's the tonic help sends worms and ticks into the... Ground! Mmm, swell sound effect. Sounded just like a real safe fallen. Yep, the magic of radio. But Mr. Silverbach, you, you said there'd be no more accidents. The, the actors are, are threatening to quit. Tell them not to worry. I've called in the number one crime buster in Dark City. He's smart, resourceful, and best of all, <laughs> cheap. Hey, sir, private eye dog at your service. Spell it out for him, whelp. Uh, yes, sir. Mysterious accidents have been plaguing Mr. Silverbark's number one radio show. Your job is to keep my actors alive so they don't miss a broadcast. Ooh. Those were the faces behind the silver throats that made girls from two to toothless swoon and guys' hearts beat like a young pup's tail? Like I said, the magic of radio. Yeah, no problem, Mr. Silverbach. Your actors are safe in my paws. I'll do everything I can to get to the bottom of this. My standard fee is five bones a day, plus expenses. See? what I tell you? <laughs> cheap! Okay, the cheap part hit home, but in my line of work, a job's a job. I did some sniffing around, trying to get a leg up on the case, and after questioning the cast and crew at Dog City's most popular and deadliest radio show, one thing was clear. Everyone was a suspect. First, there was Bernard St. Bernard. Some say he was washed up. Others said he was too heavy into the kibble gravy. Keep your eyes on Misty. Her ambition knows no bounds. Misty Whiskers had scratched and clawed away right to the top from a bit part on all my kittens. Between you and me, Seamus, X marks the spot. He's dangerous. Spot, the dog of a thousand barks. Some thought he was one table scrap short of a full doggy bag. Over there, partner! Shake paws! Uh, things have been rather topsy-turvy of late. What? I keep an eye on Don. 
You can never trust those silent types. Miss Dunn, the organist. Not much bark, but what about our bite? Take it from me, Sonny. The Foley guy's the one who done it. The who? The sound effects guy, you twit. Yeah, the sound effects guy. Hadn't missed a broadcast in 30 years. He'd heard it all. Maybe he'd heard too much. Barnard's over the hill. He's desperate. Desperate dogs do desperate things. And now, once again, it's time for another episode of... It's a dog's life. Brought to you today by Pavlov Brand Beef Biscuits. Say, Sparky, I'm just not getting that satisfying taste from my usual beef biscuits. Well, Vino, maybe it's time you switch to Pavlov Brand Beef Biscuits. Each bite is filled with huge chunks brimming with real heart and lung flavor. Say... They're doggone delicious. When you hear that sound, <laughs> you know it's time to chow down on Pavlov brand beef biscuits. They're doggone delicious. Poochie is really your brother Rex, the runt of the litter, separated from you at birth. Of course. The strange scratching in the box the night Poochie mysteriously disappeared. That means it could only have been at the pause of... No, no! Oh! Elliot, what's going on? Oh, stop your yelping. We only blew a fuse. Could you hurry, please, Mr. McTaggart? Uh, hurry up, he says. Yeah, Elliot, what's the hurry? I've already solved this so-called mystery. You know who done it? I know who, what, when, where, and why done it. Just like that, huh? Yep, like a light bulb went on in my head. We'll just see about that. Ah! My dog. Uh, and this concludes today's episode of It's a Dog's Life. St. Bernard, are you all right? I don't know. I'm seeing spots before my eyes. An accident? This was no accident. Look. My suspicions were confirmed. The culprit's identity is as plain as the nose of my face and twice as cold. In fact, I wish that someone hadn't made it so easy for me. I've cracked the case, Mr. Silverback. Only one person here could be so ruthless, so evil. So devious. So who done, done it? it? Miss Dunn done it. Dunn done, done, done it? Without a doubt. A clever ploy, Miss Dunn, orchestrating these so called accidents while sitting safely behind this very organ. In fact, this organ is probably the safest place in the studio. Wow! Would you believe this second safest place? Oh, good. Gravy. What does this mean, Hart? It means, Mr. Silverback, that whoever done it is still at large. Will Ace Hart be able to solve these horrible crimes in time to avert the next calamity? Find out after this word from our sponsor. Uh, uh, I don't understand why they put all this stuff in here in the first place. Uh. Oh, Mr. McTaggart, are you okay? Uh, just doing me job, lady. <clears throat> Come on, Elliot, what gives? I had the case all wrapped up. I thought Dunn done it till you undone it. Now I not only don't know who done it, I nearly let Dunn get done in by the one who did done it. I didn't done it. I mean, I didn't undone done. I guess Dog City's number one private eye dog just guessed wrong, huh, Ace? Uh, Maybe this will be the first case you don't solve. Oh, yeah? That'll be the day I got a new plan. This dog's gonna make the whoever done it come to him. That's exactly the kind of stuff that fans expect from Ace Hart. So, Hart, you're certain whoever done it is somewhere in this studio? And my advice to you, Mr. Silverbach, is to cut with the hand shadows. You're making me jumpy. Sorry, it's a nervous habit. 
the audience has counted on It's a Dog's Life to deliver the best thrills and chills radio has to offer. <laughs> We've never missed an episode. <laughs> but what if whoever done it strikes again? That's exactly what I want. The only way to draw this villain out and make him show himself is to catch him in the act. My plan was to keep all the suspects in one kennel where I could keep them on a short leash. Hey, you! How about getting us a couple of coffees? I don't fetch coffees. I'm the Foley guy. Are you new here? New? I've knew Mr. D in 30 years. Damn fool. I... <laughs> oh, I've had a wee mishap. Someone fetch a vet. Keep your fur on, laddie. I've near Mr. D's work yet. I can still do the broadcast. Oh. Don't worry. Spot, can you handle double duty? Of course I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Quit arguing, both of you. Oh, yeah? Who asked you? It's but a wee scratch, I'm telling you. I'm okay by myself. Don't be ridiculous. Besides, around here, there's no telling what could happen. You should be more careful where you put that ink, laddie. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. I'll try to be more careful. Sorry, Ace. Uh, we had a little accident. I thought the lights had gone out again. Here, Ace. Does this help? Hey, Elliot, you erased the sound effects guy. No, I didn't. He disappeared. Well, put him back. You're the artist. And you're the detective. You can find him yourself. Remember, Ace Heart never takes the easy way out. How am I supposed to find him without any clues? <laughs> My dog! Don't worry about your half-brother Rex, Poochie. He's meeting a train, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Jeeves, see who's at the door. Yes, madam. Hello, feline. Darling. No. Rex, it can't be. Stop the broadcast. There's a bomb in the building. It could go off any second. Someone here wants to end this story for good. Someone who works like a dog but never has his day. Someone who answers to the name Spot. No, 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 no! Not even Ace Hart can give credit where credit is due. Uh, yes. My ingenious ploy to draw out the villain is a success. He done it. But, uh, who's he? Rusty McCracken, the fooly guy! For 30 years, my sound effects have created the magic of radio! I'm the one that made it all real, not the barks of these stupid actors! But he get all the glory! You think someone would think to pat me on the head and say, There's a good doggy. But no! It's how about fetching some coffees? But I've got a treat for you. The bomb's connected to the gong. You're all going kablooey. <gasps> <laughs> oh, but I'm good. <laughs> it's getting away. <laughs> and so is the best dog on radio show I've ever produced. <laughs> After them. Yes, radio listeners, the chase is on. The heroic detective is in hot pursuit of the mad master of sound and fury. Who will triumph? Give yourself up, McCracken. There's no way out. Into the microphone. Uh, give yourself up, McCracken. There's no way out. Just then, a sudden blaze of deadly machine gun fire shatters the silence. Our hero rolls to safety. <laughs> oh, but I'm good. Another sound effect I should have known. What was sound effect? What was real? It was impossible to tell. Undaunted or dauntless detective charges. You're not fooling me this time. Suddenly, from out of nowhere, a thousand pound safe drops. 
stopping our hero cold. Could this be the end? Has evil won out over good? Hang on, Ace. Hang on. Not as long as Ace Hot is on the case. <laughs> Okay, McCracken, looks like the end of the line for you. Why don't you just come along... quietly? Stand back! Bagpipes? Ha! What are you gonna do with those? I'm warning you! I don't know how to use them! <laughs> That'll teach you who you're dealing with, laddie! But what's this? Has the evil sound effects been managed to elude truth, justice, and the canine way? <laughs> he went that way, partner. Never. He's got on Sherman time. Another sound effect or bone crushing reality. It's anybody's guess. The only place anyone in Dog City could get their paws on a Sherman tank would be. The Dog City Dog. My dog! Our dauntless detective has fallen. Has our brave hero met his match? Is this really the end for Ace Park? Ace moves and closer! And closer! Since when do lowly private eye dogs go up against Sherman tanks? That's just it, Ace. Radio lets your imagination run wild. Things can be bigger than life. Absolutely anything is possible. Great. Write it on my tombstone, will you? You're forgetting about the magic of radio, Ace. No one can resist it. <laughs> Silverback! Is this the end? Will Ace Hart cleverly escape? To find out, be sure to be with us tomorrow for the next exciting episode of It's a Dog's Life! Oh, my cue! I don't get it. No, but he will. 30 years in radio without missing a day makes a habit hard to break. Oh, but you're good, Ace Hart. You can say that again. Nice work, Ace. Hey, don't worry about thanking me, Mr. Silverbach. It's all part of the job. Thank you. <laughs> because of you, my whole radio station's in shambles. I'm going to sue the tail off you, Art. Mr. Silverbach, the phones are ringing off the hook. Calls from all over. The audience loved it. It was the most exciting radio they've ever heard. Okay, Hart. Kiss your cheap days goodbye. <laughs> I'm offering you a lifetime contract. Fame, fortune, and more fortune. And you get to work with me. What about it, big guy? Thanks, uh, but no thanks. Huh? There goes one lone wolf. The music, the sound effects, the voices, all tricks that made you believe it was real. I knew it wasn't. For me, the magic was gone. But for the rest of Dog City, radio would always be king. Lenny, your set is finally, forgive the expression, <laughs> fixed. Oh, good. Just in time. Still, I don't know why you bother. There's nothing on that's worth watching. Except for this. The adventures of Ace Hunt. Thrills, chills, and laughs enough to make you cry. Yeah. Now, where do you reckon they get the inspiration for this show, Luddy? I haven't the slightest idea, Mr. McTaggart. <laughs> 